कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ कंटिन्यूम सो ए कंटिन्यूस एंड होमोजीनियस मीडियम होमोजीनियस मीडियम इज कॉल्ड कंटिन्यूम वट इज कंटिन्यूम इट्स अ कंटिन्यूस एंड होमोजीनियस मीडियम इज कॉल्ड कंटिन्यूम सो इट्स बेसिकली एन आइडियलाइजेशन ऑफ कंटिन्यूस डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ मैटर वेर द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ मैटर आर कंसिडर्ड एज कंटिन्यूस फंक्शन ऑफ स्पेस वेरिएबल्स सर दिस स्टेटमेंट सीम्स टू बी वेरी हाई फाई आई डिड नॉट अंडरस्टैंड सर कैन यू प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड कैन यू प्लीज मेक अंस अंडरस्टैंड येस ऑफ कोर्स सी दिस डायग्राम केयरफुली हियर आई हैव कंसिडर्ड एज टू बी द प्रैक्टिकल सिनारियो वेर द मैटर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इज शोन हियर द ब्लैक points or the black spaces as you can see out here these are voids fine and this blue colored shaded portion is your uh, matter portion right so practically speaking there are certain voids obviously there is nothing in this universe or no material in this universe which is having no voids there are all materials which is having certain voids so anyways let's forget about that here we are talking about the properties of the matter which are continuous functions of the space variables right so this is the practical scenario the left hand side diagram and the right hand side diagram is your continuous so this is basically an idealization as you can see this is your practical this is your uh, practical diagram and this has been idealized so this is your ideal diagram what is that ideal what is ideal in this so practically speaking there are certain voids so i have shown three different points point number 1 with yellow point number 2 with red and point number white with uh, point number 3 with white so 1 2 and 3 and what is p1 p2 and p3 this p i have represented it for as a symbol for any property any property it could be pressure temperature density entropy anything that can, that you can think of okay so here uh this portion this portion as you can see where the point 1 lies so this is having a different space right now point 2 is having in a different space point 3 is having a different space right so point 1 will be having some different functions of space variables point 2 will be having some different functions of the space variables point 3 the location at point 3 will be having some functions of different space variables so here we have got some different space variables are they continuous no they are not continuous see here obviously the properties are not going to remain same here i have i'll be having a different property here i may have a different property here i may have a different property even though this space variables will be different out here it will be different it will be different okay so the functions basically i'm talking about so don't focus more on these i have just given a generalized trivial example for this you won't find all these things in any book anywhere okay just i in order to make you understand i have shown like this now if we do this for our if we take this practical scenario for our analysis what problem will face is we won't be able to get proper results why because as you can see there will be in unlimited number of points okay and unlimited number of space variables how many space variables will be able to calculate is it possible for you practically no so in order to avoid all these complexities what we have done is we have idealized it and we assumed that there are no voids so i have just filled everything with blue so whether you take point 1 or 2 or 3 so all these three will be having same means continuous functions of this space same space variables here the space variables were different in the region 1 the space variable was sv1 in the region 2 the space variable was sv2 in the region 3 the space variable is sv3 but here it since it is a continuous distribution of matter so there will be a single space variable yes of course there could be some different functions no problem but all these functions will be continuous functions of the space variables fine so there are certain assumptions in fluid mechanics so this is only the major assumption that we assume this um this distribution of matter to be continuum right so this is the assumption that is your flow variables which is nothing but pressure velocity etc and the fluid property just like we have density viscosity etc 
they vary continuously from one point to another like this okay so they vary continuously not discontinuous so if we take if we uh, reject the concept of continuum then in that case we have to do what there will be a discontinuous variation which is obviously cumbersome tiresome whatever you say it is going to be very difficult for our analysis so in analysis of fluid mechanics what we do is we assume everything to be continuous so remove all the complexities and let's go for it let's see here the density at a particular point if we talk about so you know that it is nothing but mass per unit volume but in the limiting sense we can write the definition for this density as mass by uh, volume as volume tends to zero so let's say we have taken a cuboidal block or cubical block and let's say we assume that we are interested to find the density at a particular point so in order to reach from this space to this particular point what we need to do is we need to decrease the volume and i'll make this volume tending to zero right so if i do that and if i find this limit value so that will give me the value for this particular density fine so in continuum limit what is going to happen obviously i will be having some finite continuum volume so in order to uh, get that particular value of density in the continuum limit i will remove this zero and i'll put this zero i'll replace this zero with this continuum volume so this was my initial volume and i am just approaching towards a very very small elemental finite volume which is called continuum volume right so in this particular space i'll be getting the density at this in within this particular space right so here we are talking about the density at a point and here we are talking about the density in the continuum limit now validation of continuum model so when can we say that our model of our analysis of fluid mechanics is a continuum model for that there is a factor called molecular density how can we define it molecular density uh, is nothing but molecules per unit volume okay how many molecules are there per unit volume so that is basically your molecular density great so the distance between the molecules is actually characterized by mean free path what is mean free path it's nothing but statistical average distance between the successive collisions of the molecules so let's say we have some different molecules and they are having some successive collisions so what is that statistical average distance so that statistical average distance is called your mean average path represented as lambda now if your mean free uh, mean free path is a small then in that case of course the molecular density is going to be high and the continuum concept will be valid now if your mean pre uh, mean free path is large the molecular density is going to be low and the continuum is not going to be valid now sir you are telling that if lambda is small lambda is large so what is that reference how can we say uh, whatever is small to you may be large for me isn't it so there should be some standard reference uh, comparing through which we can say that which is small and which is large okay so in order to avoid that confusion we uh, mr nudson gave a number on his name which is given as lambda by l where l is the characteristic length characteristic length is nothing but or characteristic length is what it's a basically a dimension which affects the flow or the property of that particular fluid okay so just like say suppose if there is some uh, plate if there is some flow through a plate let's say there is some uh, fluid which is passing through this particular plate now in that case what we what is going to be the characteristic length now in that case the characteristic length will be nothing but the length of this plate isn't it the characteristic length will be or the characteristic dimension will be the length of this particular plate now let's say the flow is happening through some pipe okay now in this case what is going to be my characteristic length let's say the flow liquid is flowing or fluid is some flowing through this so in this case what is the characteristic length the characteristic length is nothing but the diameter for this particular pipe so accordingly whatever the specimen that you are taking for your analysis it depends upon that what is your characteristic dimension right so this lambda and this l both are having the same uh, units so the same units gets cancelled out and this you will get as finally a dimensionless parameter so this newton number is nothing but a dimensionless parameter which describes the degree of departure from continuum right how far is it from continuum or how close it is it from continuum 
So this is the reference uh, numbers that is very important that if your Knudsen number is less than 0 0.01 then we, then only we can say that the continuum concept is valid. If the value of Knudsen number lies between 0 0.01 to 0 0.1 we'll call that flow to be slip flow. If the value lies between 0 0.1 to 10 we will call that flow to be transition flow and if the value of the Knudsen number is more than 10 then we'll say the flow to be free molecular flow. So that's all with the concept of continuum. See you in the next lecture. Till then, bye.